May I extend a really heartfelt thank you to Deepa uh, for the opportunity to be part of this worldwide group of extraordinary women. In Ireland, we have a saying which is, we stand on the shoulders of our grandmothers. And that really is to emphasize the point that change doesn't happen quickly. Or should I say lasting change doesn't happen quickly. It in fact can take two or three generations to happen. If I could take a little time to tell my story and a little of that of Ireland uh, and what has happened over the last two to three generations and how women have come to, to learn to own their own voice, their status and indeed their sexuality. When I was eight years of age, my father died way too young at the age of 44. And he left my mother uh, as a widow with four very young children. In fact, one as young as nine months old. Um, and so really she had to pivot. She had to do a, a full 360 degree pivot from being a mother and homemaker to becoming the sole parent and the sole provider for her four daughters. And when I look back, it's like my mother had to fast track herself and her four daughters through a generation of the liberalization of women and family and education in society and life in general. Ireland as a country, we would rightly or wrongly consider ourselves to be quite open and indeed to be quite liberal. The status of women has progressed hugely, should I say. However, I still think the foundations on which this liberalization and which this progress has been made is very, very fragile. I mean, simply look at what social media is doing in destroying so much of the good work that has been done so far. And in fact, it is almost turning back the clock. But I'm going to come back to that later, if I may. Today, I'm going to come up with the expressions which we in Ireland have used over the number of decades that have been very successful in silencing women and indeed putting them right and true and firmly in their box. So the first expression, here we go. A woman's place is in the home. So the Roman Catholic Church traditionally in Ireland would have controlled education, healthcare, and certainly social policy up to very recently in Ireland. And women were always told in no uncertain terms. Number one, a woman's place is in the home. And number two, if it doesn't work out, well, you have made your bed, so go lie in it. The second expression, go forth and multiply. So in Catholic Ireland, it was very clear that women did not truly own their own bodies. As wife, your role was to go forth and to multiply. Or should I say the sizes of family back in my mother's time were 12, 13, 14, 15 children, not unusual. Now that has decreased hugely. And I suppose the average size of a family now in Ireland would be about two to three children, which is showing us that women are beginning to have an input and to have a voice on the size of the family. And indeed, they're beginning to have an equal footing in a relationship. So this third expression, who do you think you are? Well, traditionally, the man of the house had the most senior role in the house, and it was he who ruled the home. And indeed, his sons all followed suit, and they began to learn and expect that very role for themselves. When a the girl had an opinion, or expressed an opinion which was different to that of the home or of the household, she was told in no uncertain terms, who do you think you are? Boys, jobs for boys and jobs for girls still exist in Ireland uh, and you know it really is it is like the adage which we use here which is a woman's work is never done. On the socialising side when it comes to socialising boys traditionally were allowed to stay out late. They were allowed to sow their wild oats but it was home early for the girls and that was certainly true in my time too because if I stayed out late the view was that well I was asking for it. And Ireland has a sad, very sad and shocking history around the care of single mothers having babies outside of wedlock. Because let's face it, it was frankly always the woman who led the poor man astray. And that poor man, by the way, was very likely an employer or probably a member of the clergy. So the women were always seen as the perpetrators. The fourth expression, she is full of herself. So traditionally in Ireland, Girls go to girls' schools and boys go to boys' schools. And that actually, dare I say, it hasn't changed that much. There's still a lot of evidence of, of that across Ireland. And girls were taught, well, we were taught the core subjects and we were taught the soft subjects. And we were educated to be young ladies, to be wise, to be homemakers. And if you expressed anything beyond that, you were told, well, she is full of herself.
She is tricky. So today, whilst most women do return to work, there is across many organizations, both public and private, there's evidence of the old boys club and that it still prevails and that it is alive and well. For women who are strong, who are ambitious and who are forging ahead and indeed who are instruments of change, they are considered to be tricky. And now to my earlier comment on social media and how it is absolutely at risk of shattering the very foundations on which the liberation of women has been built over the last two generations. And as you probably gathered, I feel quite strongly about this. <clears throat> Social media has created a norm. And as women, as liberated women, we have to ask the question, what is norm? And in fact, if there is a norm. And secondly, why should we conform to a norm? And one such norm created by social media is that women should constantly be body beautiful all of the time, happy all of the time, popular and liked all of the time. So when my mother was told to button up in order to dress the way society accepted, my daughters are told to be slim, to be toned and to be tanned all of the time to be socially accepted. And research, this is so scary, I can't believe this. Research showed that before a photograph is posted on social media, an average of six, like six, hello, six shots are taken to ensure the best shot is posted. So when we were told to say cheese for the camera, well, you see, that's just not good enough anymore because what you have to do is you have to pose and you have to practice your pose and you have to perfect it. And the sexier and the more evocative it is, the better. So here we are, we're three generations later and women still feel that they have to make their bodies pleasing and appealing to men at all times. And just again on social media, when my mother was told that she had made her bed so go lie in it, my daughters are actually been told and are being expected to post their everyday life experiences on social media. And in so doing it, they're to make sure that it's posted in such a way that my life is perfect, wishing you were here. And that is meant to be a true reflection of their daily lives. On top of that, social media promotes and enables a person to be compared, compared with their peers, with the opposite sex, which in this case is men. And then it promotes this comparison with the ability to be liked, to be followed and to be tagged. Actually, the terms adopted by social media in their own right, are, they're just demeaning in my view. I mean, followed to me is almost predatory. Tagged, well, tagged, frankly, in my view is degrading. And as liberated women, we believe in the independence of both body and mind and being true to ourselves and to be happy in our own skin. And unless our generation and that of our children bring social media into check, the very foundation on which the liberation of women has been built it would be fragmented and it would reverse the clock. So for me, when my children look back at my life, I want them to see progress. I want them to see real and lasting change during my lifetime and during theirs. But we as liberated women, as instruments of change, we have moved the equality dial in their favor. And my wish for them is they can be happy in their own skin, independent of mind, independent of body, shaping their very own future and that of their grandchildren and that they can proudly stand up and say, we stand on the shoulders of our grandmothers. <laughs>